Rhetorical Quest. In the last two videos, we talked about the forces that drive us into and out of relationships, and we talked about the stages of relationships. And when we talked about the stages of relationships, I talked about how if you if you stay in a stagnant relationship, that eventually the relationship uh, will re-intensify, and then it'll become a different relationship. See, here's the thing, though. In most relationships, we don't really want that to happen. In most relationships, it really is okay if the relationship just dies. But there's a few relationships. There's a relationship every now and then where we decide we really do want to continue that relationship. And when we do that, most of us call that love. Now, it's not always romantic love. I might say I love my best friend. I want to continue that relationship even when it's stagnant. But it's not like this kind of love I have with my wife, where I also want to continue that relationship even when it's stagnant. So how do we do that? How do we maintain in these stagnant relationships? Well, the trick really is to constantly communicate love to each other. Here's the thing, though. That's difficult. And here's what makes it difficult. The way one person communicates love might be different from the way another person communicates love. A few people have really started to enjoy the idea of love languages in order to talk about that. And most of the time we say there are five love languages. Here's the thing. These languages, the reason they use the metaphor of languages, and they're not really different languages, they're not like the difference between French and German and English, they're different ways of expressing. But meta the metaphor of language is a good one. And the reason it's a good one is because these five different ways of communicating, if one of them's not yours, you actually have to learn to communicate in that other way. And it'll never be natural to you. But there's a chance that your partner may communicate in that way. The first of the five love languages is words of affirmation. Sometimes we communicate through words of affirmation. We communicate our love. For some people, the way that they know that their partner loves them is that their partner told them so. For people for whom that's not their love language, they start to feel like, well, I could tell you anything. You know, saying I love you doesn't mean I love you. I love you and I'll prove it. Well, for a person who, for whom words of affirmation are their primary love language, no amount of proving it will mean as much as saying, I love you. The second of the love languages is quality time. Quality time means putting aside everything else for the time you spend with that person. For a person for whom quality time is their love language, watching TV while you're supposed to spend time with them, that's not, that's not really spending time with them. Trying to eat dinner while you're spending time with them, that's not really spending time with them. When you spend time with them, it's got to be all focused on them. For somebody for whom that's not their, their, their love language, it seems like, well, why wouldn't you just be able to, uh, why wouldn't you be able to just do other things while you're doing things together? And you're still together and it's quality time, but it's not quality time to a person for whom that's their language. If you want to communicate love to somebody for whom quality time is their language, you have to be focused on them. For some people, receiving gifts is a love language. They will be so happy if you will just give them something. Something that shows you thought about them, that you that that's what makes them think you care about them. For a person for whom receiving gifts is their love language, 
not getting a gift when it's appropriate to get one is basically a slap in the face. They want to receive gifts. For those of us for whom it's not our love language, it kind of feels like bribery. And we're like, well, yeah, I love you. I don't need to give you anything. And we might even think it's hard to receive in that language if, if somebody else is speaking in it. Because, like, I don't need more stuff. The fourth love language is acts of service. For a person who has this love language, doing something for somebody else is the ultimate sign of love. And having somebody do something for you, that shows that they love you. For a person, for a person who, for whom this is their love language, the ultimate way to hurt them would be to ask them to do more. They will obviously be doing as much as they can. Anything that makes their life more difficult would be an act of unlove to this person. For a person in this situation, for a person who doesn't speak this love language, they might be looking at those acts of service and say, why do I got to do stuff for you? I love you. Why would I need to do anything for you? The fifth love language is physical touch. And it's not just about sex. Physical touch as a love language is about the, the, the holding, the handshakes, the hugs, uh, being close to somebody, being near to them. Uh, that's how they know that they are loved, is because they are being touched physically. Now, all of this can relate back to public speaking. I know in this section we're going beyond public speaking. But all of this can relate back to it, because, see, Aristotle pointed out that if your audience doesn't believe that you have goodwill towards them, they're not going to believe what they what you say. So it is a part of ethos. Sometimes you need to tell your audience, give them words of affirmation, and tell them you care about them, and that's why you're telling them this. Sometimes you need to make sure that you're being respectful of your audience's time, not going way over, and not just coming up with something to fill the time. You need to have quality time with your audience. Sometimes you should give something to your audience. You know, I found that hand, giving out a handout every once in a while, for people who have the love language of receiving gifts, they really respond to that. Something you've worked on, and it shows that you care. You need to make your public speech into an act of service. Uh, if you make it into an act of service, something you are doing for your audience rather than doing for yourself, those who receive love as an act of service, who receive acts of service as love, will notice that and they will see your speech. Finally, we have physical touch. In general, a public speaker should not touch their audience. But it is a good idea to move around it is a good idea to make eye contact with your audience, to get close to them from time to time, and to show them that they real that you really do care. So the five love languages, words of affirmation, quality time, receiving of gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. We're going to continue going beyond public speaking, and we're going to talk a little bit about communication in organizations communications in groups, and communications in the me communication in the media. So we're going to cover those three, and then we will be done uh, with at least the bulk of these rhetorical crest videos. I may want to, to, uh, uh, to develop them again at a later time. I may want to make changes. I may want to make additions. But we will have the bulk of a public speaking class. Now, in a real public speaking class, you'd be getting feedback on your speeches. Uh, you would be getting, uh, getting time with the instructor. You would also be getting extra readings that you'd have to do. Uh, but, you know, for the video of this 
public speaking class. This would be the lecture part of it. And it can be used online as part of another public speaking class, and some of you might be doing that. I kind of hope so. Uh, anyway, this is this is, uh, this is is the end of communication and relationships. So we're going to have, have really three more videos, group communication, organizational communication, and communication in the media.